When it comes to the issue of women pastors, interpretations vary among Christians. The key passages often cited are 1 Timothy 2.12, where Paul states, I do not permit a woman to teach or to assume authority over a man, she must be quiet. And 1 Corinthians 14.34, women should remain silent in the churches. However, many scholars argue that these verses must be understood in their historical and cultural context. The Bible does not offer a blanket prohibition, but rather addresses specific issues within the early church. How do the roles of women in the early church, as described in the New Testament, inform the debate on women pastors today? The New Testament presents a vibrant picture of women actively involved in the early church. For instance, Phoebe is referred to as a deacon in Romans 16, 1, and Junia is noted among the apostles in Romans 16, 7. Priscilla, along with her husband Aquila, is described as teaching Apollos, an important early Christian preacher, more accurately about the faith in Acts 18.26. These instances suggest that women held significant roles and were integral to the ministry of the early church. These examples challenge the notion that women cannot serve as pastors, indicating that women have historically played vital roles in spreading the gospel and building the church. What can we learn from prominent female figures in the Bible, such as Deborah, Priscilla and Phoebe, about women's leadership in the church? Deborah, a prophetess and judge in the Old Testament, demonstrates that God can call women to positions of leadership and authority. As a judge, Deborah led Israel to victory and provided wise and godly leadership. Judges 4, 5. Priscilla, mentioned in the New Testament, is frequently noted alongside her husband, Aquila, in a manner that suggests she was a leader in her own right, Acts 18.26, Romans 16, 3. Phoebe, referred to as a deacon, was a servant leader in the early church, Romans 16, 1, 2. These examples illustrate that God uses women in significant ways to fulfill his purposes, supporting the view that women can be called to pastoral and leadership roles within the church. How do different Christian denominations reconcile Paul's teachings on women with their current practices regarding women pastors? Christian denominations vary widely in their interpretation of Paul's teachings on women. Some, like the Southern Baptist Convention, hold to a complementarian view, believing that pastoral roles are reserved for men based on a literal interpretation of 1 Timothy 2 and 1 Corinthians 14. Others, such as the United Methodist Church, adopt an egalitarian perspective, emphasizing passages like Galatians 3.28, which states, There is neither Jew nor Gentile, neither slave nor free, nor is there male and female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. These denominations argue that the overarching message of the gospel is one of equality and mutual service, thereby supporting the ordination of women as pastors. What is the historical context behind Paul's instructions to Timothy and Titus about women's roles in the church? Understanding the historical context of Paul's instructions is crucial. In the first century, the early church faced many challenges, including the need to maintain order and address false teachings. In 1 Timothy 2.11, 15 and Titus 2, 3, 5. Paul gives specific instructions to ensure that the church operates in a way that reflects the cultural norms of the time, which often viewed women as less educated and more susceptible to deception. Some scholars argue that Paul's restrictions were meant to address specific issues in the Ephesian and Cretan churches rather than to impose a permanent ban on women's leadership. Some view Paul's instructions for women to remain silent in 1 Corinthians 14.34. 35 and 1 Timothy 2 11. 12 as context specific directives addressing disruptions in worship services or the need to correct false teaching. Others see these as reflecting broader cultural norms of the time, where women's public speech was often restricted. Additionally, some scholars argue that these passages must be read in light of other New Testament texts that show women praying and prophesying publicly. 1 Corinthians 11.5 these diverse interpretations highlight the need for careful exegesis and a holistic understanding of Scripture. Are there examples of women serving in pastoral or leadership roles in the Bible that are often overlooked or misunderstood? 
Indeed, several examples are often overlooked. Lydia, the first European convert, hosted a house church in Philippi, Acts 16, 14, 15. Euodia and Syntyche, mentioned in Philippians 4, 2, 3, were co-workers with Paul in the Gospel. Mary Magdalene was the first to witness and proclaim the resurrection of Jesus, John 20:18. These instances show that women played crucial roles in the early church, supporting the idea that women can serve in leadership positions, including pastoral roles. These examples challenge us to reconsider traditional interpretations and acknowledge the significant contributions of women in the ministry. How do cultural and historical changes influence our understanding of biblical teachings on women in ministry? Cultural and historical contexts significantly influence our interpretation of biblical teachings. In the first century, the cultural norms were vastly different from today. Women's roles were more restricted and literacy rates among women were lower. As societies have progressed, the roles of women have evolved leading many to re-examine traditional interpretations of scripture. The principle of progressive revelation suggests that as we grow in our understanding of God's word and the context in which it was written, we can better apply its timeless truths to contemporary issues. This perspective encourages a re-evaluation of the role of women in ministry, recognizing that cultural shifts can illuminate new insights. What role does the Holy Spirit play in calling and equipping women for pastoral ministry according to Scripture? The Holy Spirit is the divine agent who calls and equips individuals for ministry. In Acts 2.17, 18 Peter quotes the prophet Joel saying, In the last days God says, I will pour out my Spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my Spirit in those days, and they will prophesy. This passage underscores the Spirit's role in empowering both men and women for ministry. The Holy Spirit's gifting is not limited by gender, and the fruitfulness of one's ministry should be the primary criterion for pastoral leadership. This view aligns with the belief that God calls and equips women for pastoral roles just as He does men. How do proponents and opponents of women pastors interpret Galatians 3.28, which speaks of equality in Christ? in the context of church leadership. Galatians 3.28 states, There is neither Jew nor Gentile, neither slave nor free, nor is there male and female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. Proponents of women pastors see this verse as a declaration of the fundamental equality of all believers, which should extend to roles within the church, including pastoral leadership. They argue that in Christ, traditional barriers are broken down, and all are equally called to serve. Opponents, however, contend that this verse speaks to spiritual equality and not necessarily functional roles within the church. They maintain that while men and women are equal in worth, they have distinct roles as outlined in other passages. This ongoing debate reflects the broader discussion about how to balance scriptural mandates with contemporary understandings of equality. What is the Orthodox and Catholic position on female pastors? The Orthodox and Catholic churches both maintain that the ordination of women as pastors is not permissible based on their interpretation of biblical and traditional teachings. Both traditions adhere to a complementarian view, which holds that men and women have distinct complementary roles. They often cite passages such as 1 Timothy 2.12, where Paul states, I do not permit a woman to teach or to assume authority over a man, and 1 Corinthians 14.34, which instructs women to remain silent in churches. Additionally, they reference the example of Jesus, who chose only men as his twelve apostles, as a model for church leadership. The Orthodox and Catholic positions are also deeply rooted in the teachings of the early church fathers and the continuous tradition of the church, which they believe faithfully interprets and preserves the apostolic teachings. While acknowledging the important roles women have played in the church, including as saints, martyrs, and teachers. These traditions hold that the sacrament of holy orders is reserved for men, based on their understanding of biblical and apostolic precedent. The question of women serving as pastors is complex and multifaceted. By examining the biblical texts, historical context, and the examples of women in early church leadership, we gain a deeper understanding of this issue. 
It's essential to approach these discussions with grace, humility, and a commitment to seeking God's truth. As we continue to study and pray, let us be open to the Holy Spirit's guidance in discerning how best to honor and apply God's word in our lives and communities. Bible Short Stories signing off. If you enjoyed this article, please like and subscribe to our channel. Comment Amen if you found this helpful and inspiring.